So what I did, guys, okay. so I was exp explaining how can we program the buzzer we have. Uh, as I told you, we have a buzzer. This buzzer is connected to PT5, okay? That's what I explained. All what I explained, guys, in order to uh, run, in order to mix sound, all what you have to do, you have just a generic square wave here. That's what I said. But the frequency, the frequency of this square wave should be in the range human being can hear, which usually, I, I'm not, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's in the range between 200 until until 18 or 20 kilohertz. Uh, sometimes it's different from one person to another, okay? Uh, and I told you, when you change the frequency, you can actually create different tunes, tunes, okay? And I told you, if you look at the project the student did before, they ran like songs, okay? The way they ran songs, you know, any song should have a number of tunes, okay? So you can, you can run, uh, so all what you have to do, you have to program different tunes and then run them in, in a certain order so that you can make a song, okay? So now I'm going to teach this program, okay? What you want to, what I want to do right, right now, I want to make two tune, two tune siren, okay? So two tune, two tune means, means two, two different frequencies, okay? Because every frequency is going to make one tune, is that okay? And then we, I want to alternate, alternate between these two frequencies. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run uh, 250, 250 for half a second. And then I'm, I'm gonna run five, 500 hertz for half a second. Then I'm gonna come back to here and so on, okay? So let me, let me el elaborate here. So what I wanna do right now, guys, is, let me open this one first. Okay, so what I want to do, guys, I told you, I want to run 500, 500 hertz, and 250 hertz, okay? Everyone for half a second, and then I'm going to alternate. That means, for example, here, uh, 500 hertz. Uh, sorry, it's, this is a bigger frequency, okay? So this is 500 hertz. Sorry, 500 hertz. I want to run it. I want to run it for half a second. Okay. And then after half a second, I'm going to run um, a, a smaller frequency. Smaller frequency. Okay. This way. I'm going to run, run it. So this is two, 250 hertz. I'm, I'm going to run it for half a second. And then I'm going to repeat. So this one half a second, this one half a second. Okay. If I do something like that, guys. So I'm gonna make a siren, like alarm, 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 or like a police siren. You will hear. I'm gonna run the video, and you will hear it now. Okay. So you will hear something like um, um, uh, um, uh, um, something like that, because uh is one tune, um is another tune. Okay. So how can we make a program like that? Okay. Number one. How can you generate a square wave? That's very easy. That's what you have done so far. It's very easy. So all what you have to do, you have to output one on, on BT5, and then you have to wait for some time, and then you have to output zero, zero on BT5, and then you have to wait, and you have to repeat. That's how you can make a square wave. So the first question is that, how much is the weight? Yeah, for sure. This weight can determine how, how is your frequency, how big is your frequency. I'm gonna tell you uh, how how much how much weight or how much delay do you do in it. Very easy. If we look at this one, 500 hertz, you know this is the frequency. You know the period, which is T, should equal one over F. What is the period? The period is the time. This time here is a period, is T, okay? So in this case, it's gonna become one over 500 hertz should equal should equal what? Uh, two millisecond. Is that okay? Should, should be two millisecond. That means from here to here should be two millisecond. That means because the duty cycle is 50%, duty, what, what is the meaning of duty cycle? Okay, that's what we're gonna do in the coming lab. Duty cycle means uh, T on, this is what we call T on, or T high, T on divided by T. 
okay how big how big is the high is a ratio or how big is the high high is a time of the high divided by the whole period okay so do, in this case the 20 second is 50 percent 50 percent means half and half 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 of g is high half and low okay so this one sh the delay here should be one millisecond and one millisecond this, this, this is in case of 500 hertz okay i'm gonna repeat okay what about 250 i'm gonna repeat exactly same thing exactly same thing so now g in this case should equal one over f which should be one over 250 should equal four millisecond is that okay so four millisecond that means i have to generate a signal this way this this part is two millisecond and this part two millisecond that's it so anyway so what i want to say guys the first part of the problem we need to we need to gen, we need to we need to generate a square wave and in order to generate square wave uh, with different frequencies i have to determine how big is the uh, delay this time okay so and here in, in, in this case, the delay should be one millisecond. Here the delay has to be uh, two milliseconds. Is that okay? Any question here so far? Okay. The other thing is, this, so this is one part of the problem, okay? There is another part. What is the other part? I'm gonna tell you what is the other part, okay? Before I show the program, okay? So this is the first frequency, for example, this is 500 Hertz, okay? So I want to run, I want to run this one for half a second. After, after half a second, I'm going to, I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch it to the other frequency. Okay. Which is 250 hertz. So the, I already, I already explained how can you generate 250 and you can, how you generate 500 hertz. That's what I explained. What I want to explain now is how can I have second, how, how, sorry, how I can make this half second. How I can how I can run this one for half a second. That's what I'm gonna explain now. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you how. Okay. So I already know the time from here to here. The time from here to here, how much you guys? It's two milliseconds. Is that okay? So every one cycle is gonna be two milliseconds. So the question is that how many cycles I have to generate in half a second? Okay, so I need to know how many cycles. So what I'm gonna do is gonna be half divided by two milliseconds should equal the number of cycles we should generate. Okay, so this one is gonna become uh, 250. I guess it's 250. Is that okay? So 250. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, 1,000. Yeah, it's 250. Okay, that means that means if I generate 250, 250 cycles, this is gonna make half a second. That's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do right now in in the program, guys, I'm gonna make a full loop. I'm gonna make a full loop for 250. Every iteration, I'm gonna generate a cycle, or only one cycle in one iteration here, two millisecond, and here two millisecond. Is that clear, guys? By this way, I'm gonna generate 500 hertz for half a second. Okay, so I'm gonna make a full loop. This full loop for 250, 250 iteration. Every iteration, I'm gonna generate one cycle. Is that okay? Here, I'm gonna use the same idea here, the same idea, but here because the frequency is different. So if you divide half, half a second divided by four millisecond, four millisecond is the time, guys, from here to here. This is four millisecond. So here I have to generate 125 cycles. Yeah, because the, because the time is bigger. So it has to be this, this number. Okay, guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is the main idea. The main idea, I'm gonna have two full loops. One full loop, I'm gonna generate this signal for 250 times. And then another full loop to generate this signal for 125, and then I'm gonna repeat again. Okay. Before I go to the program, I explain the main idea. Any question here in the main idea before I choose a programming? Okay, so let me go to the program. Let's start with the C language. Maybe some, sometimes it's easier to explain the C first. I'm gonna explain both. So let's see the C language here, guys. Number one, 
This is okay. You should not think about it before using any port. You have to configure it. Period. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here. Here I'm gonna configure PT5. PT5. Here is, is this extra extra tier. PT5. I'm gonna PT5. As, uh, so I'm gonna configure B, PT5 as output. So this is. You, you, don't forget, BT5 means bit number six because we start counting from zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. I think something something is wrong here, right? This is, uh, no, that's okay. This is BT5, yeah. So here I'm gonna configure this bit. I'm gonna configure it using OR because what I'm gonna, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna come to bit five, bit, bit number five in DJ, and then I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write one. Okay, uh, because one means it's output anyway. Okay, so this is a configuration. Then I'm gonna make a while loop, while loop here. In this while loop, exactly like what I told you right now, I'm gonna have two fours. One for loop for 250. Okay, here I'm gonna generate 500 hertz, right? So here, this part, I'm gonna generate one cycle, only one cycle here, okay, of 500 hertz. Okay, and then for 250, 250. So I'm gonna generate 250 cycles because 250 is gonna be half a second. Is that okay? So the, okay, how can you generate this one? Number one, PT5 should be high. That's exactly what I did here, PT5 high. Then I'm gonna wait one millisecond. I have just explained it, okay? How can you come up with one millisecond? And then you have to clear, wait one millisecond and then you have to repeat. So here, high. Wait one millisecond, zero, wait one millisecond, and so on, okay? After I finish 250 from this one, I, I'm gonna now, I'm gonna generate 250 hertz. The second tune. This is tune one, this is tune, this is tune one, this is tune two, okay? It's the second tune. Here, exactly same thing. Exactly same program, same, same, same instruction. The only difference is just is a delay. Here, I'm gonna make the delay two millisecond instead of one millisecond. Okay, guys. So by by doing the, this, you are gonna hear uh, 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 police siren, like two different tools alternating. Okay. Any question in C language before I, I move to assembly? Any question, guys? Okay. Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing, but. Exactly same idea, everything is the same, but I'm gonna use the assembly format, assembly instructions, okay? So let's see how it works. Number one, that's exactly what I did. So bit set in assembly. So here you have to configure PT5 output, okay? So that's exactly what I did in C, okay? Number two, I'm gonna have infinite loop. This is the infinite loop from here to here. This is the infinite loop. This is exactly similar to while, while one. Okay, so this infinite loop. Inside this loop, I'm gonna create two fours. This is one four and another four. Okay, this four for 250 and this four for 250. Okay, I'm gonna clear it. Any question? This is a big picture. Now I'm gonna explain how to make every four. Okay. So now, why is it, how can you make a four here? This is, look here guys. I'm gonna use register X as a counter. And again, uh, I already explained different ways to make four. So I, I selected this way here. So this is this is a four loop for 250 times, as you see here. Look at this, this instruction. As an instruction, I square in um, purple. So here, yeah, so here, this is full loop for every time I'm gonna decrement and if it is not zero, come back. So this is gonna be full loop for 250 times. Okay, guys? So. Here, I have to generate one cycle from this signal, one cycle, okay? How I can do that? It's it, pull it high, wait one millisecond, bit clear, wait one millisecond. So here, in the, in, the, in the body of four, we're gonna generate a signal like this one. Is that okay, guys? What about this part? This part, exactly similar. The only difference is that I need, I need for loop, for 125, it's not for 250, 125, okay, this is number one. Number two, uh, the delay is two, it's two millisecond instead of one millisecond because I'm generating 250 hertz signal, okay? 
Any questions? Okay. Before before I choose a video, before I uh, before I play the video, I just want to ask you a question. I see how how you are gonna imagine it. Uh, so. So what I'm gonna do, guys, in the video, as I told you, it's a, we have half a second, and then another half a second. Okay, this one is gonna be like high frequency, higher, because this is 500 hertz. The second one is lower frequency, because this is tune two. Okay, so this is tune one, this is tune two, and then I'm gonna repeat again. So this pattern is just repeated. Okay, so. So the way again, you are gonna. I'm gonna run the video now. When I run, when I run this program, you will hear, you will hear something like two tones, right? Like a police siren, something like that. Okay. Now I'm I'm gonna ask you a question. What if I change this time? And instead of half a second, I'm gonna make a quarter a second, or oh point two whatever. So I'm gonna make it shorter or make it longer. How is gonna look like? If you make it shorter. And that's what I, um, you will see in the video. The alarm is going to be something like urgent alarm. Urgent alarm. You know what I mean by urgent alarm? Something like, oh, very fast, something like that. You will see it in the video. So that's, that's what you will see. So now I'm going to run the video. You are going to hear two different types of uh, 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 one, one uh, of, of this program. One with half. The other one, I'm going to use a smaller, uh, shorter time. Okay? How can you generate a shorter time? That's very easy. Half a second, uh, the full loop. All what I have to do, I'm going to just play in the full loop. This one, is, it was 250. Uh, it was 250 iterations, right? I'm going to make it shorter. I'm going to make it 125 iterations. By this way, I'm going to stop here. Okay? Half. Half a second. It's the same thing here. This one was 125 iteration. Okay? So uh, 125 cycles, okay? Now I'm gonna make it shorter. For example, 50 or 60 or whatever, okay? So you will hear it now, I'm gonna show the video. Um, this is a siren program. Uh, here, uh, the tone is 250. Here, it's 250. And this one, it's 125. Well, let's run this one. Now let's make... I think you can hear the two tones, right? So you can differentiate, you can feel there are two tones because two different frequencies now. Okay. Now I'm gonna change I'm gonna change the full loop instead of 250, as I told you, I'm gonna make it shorter. Okay. Instead of half a second, half a second, I'm gonna make it like a quarter and quarter. You will hear now how this signal or how this alarm is different from urgent alarm. Okay, you will see it now. Take the tone, shorter and make it shorter. For example, in, instead of 250, I'm gonna make it 100. And as shown here, instead of uh, 125, it's going to be 15. So now you will see the difference. Okay, guys, I think you can see that it's very, you can see the difference. And again, you already have these programs and you have the board. A very easy thing you can do, okay? Just run, 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 run this program and you can play and see how it looks like, okay? So one thing I want to mention here before I leave this topic, because before I f finish this to topic is, I remember in, in one exam, I asked it, in one exam, I asked the student to make like a beep, beep, okay? So sometimes when you open a door, 
you hear something beep, something like that, okay? It was, it was application, it was something like that in the exam. I told the student, like, uh, like you have like electronic uh, lock, okay, electronic lock, so you have to enter the best code, okay? After you add the best code, uh, the microcontrol, if, uh, so if the best code is correct, it's gonna open the door and it's gonna make a beep, beep, beep uh, to the user. Uh, it, it, you remember when you swipe uh, your card, you hear something beep just to, to notify the user that the, the door is open, something like that, okay? So how can we make a beep like this? So I told the students, uh, I, in this exam, you need to make a beep for, I think, 20 seconds, something like that. And you, to make a beep, for example, I can make a beep uh, using, for example, 500 hertz, okay? So that's very easy. That's exactly similar to what I taught right now. So I want you to generate if I one tune in this time, this is one tune. It is not in two, two tunes because it's not it's not like alarm. Uh, uh, it's not alarm. It's just beep something like that. Okay. Anyway, so I ask the student to make only one one tune for five hundred hertz. Okay. So number one, how can you do it? That's very easy. All, all what you have to do similar to what I explained. How can you generate five hundred hertz? The only thing here is the loop. How big, how big is the loop, okay? So on other words, how many cycles you have to generate here? Is that okay? How many iterations? Uh, because in every iteration, you are gonna generate one, one, one cycle, okay? So how many iterations? So all what you have to do, similar to what I explained right now, is gonna be 20 hertz, it's gonna be divided by the time here, which is two millisecond. Is that okay? The time here. So you will find it is around uh, 500 times 20, which equal 10,000. So you need, you need to make 10,000 iterations. Is that okay? Any question, guys, before I leave this topic? Any questions? Okay. So now, I'm gonna move to another topic now. So I think I'm done with this topic. Okay. So now I'm gonna, okay, let me summarize before, before I move forward, guys, let me summarize what I did so far. What I did so far, guys, is um, number one, I explained, uh, I told you I, in the very beginning, I told you for any, any input output port, how can you configure it? So configuration was the first part I told. Second part I told, I told you, how can you program LEDs? We have a number of LEDs, how can you program them, right? Uh, also, I explain how can you make a flashing, flashing LED. And when you create a flashing LED, actually what you are doing, you are doing a square wave. And it's very easy, you can generate square, square wave easily, right? And then after that, uh, using C and assembly, okay? After that, I explained how can you like you make like a serial communication, serial data, uh, which is, so, so it's just one pin, you generate one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, whatever, okay? Uh, and after that, I explained using post C and assembly. I didn't teach yet how can you program the same segment. After that, I moved, I'm gonna come back to it later. Uh, after that, I explained how can you use buzzer, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna move to switches. This is switches here, guys. Can you see, see the switches here? Okay. So I'm gonna, uh, what I, uh, the main difference between this one and what I took before is, what I took before was output portals. Everything I took before was output portals. This one is input. You are getting, I already explained what I mean by output and input. Output, microprocessor has to write to the port. Input, microprocessor has to read from the port. That's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So microprocessor has to read from these pins or these ports, and then it's gonna check if it is one or zero, okay? If it is one, it means something. If it is zero, so I have to do something else, okay? So let me go back to the picture of uh, the board to sh show you exactly what I mean here. Uh, What I'm gonna program right now, guys, what I'm gonna talk about is the switches. As you see here, guys, we have eight switches. Eight, every little, every little one here is a switch, right, a switch. Uh, and also, I'm gonna explain push buttons. We have four push buttons. You can see, see them here, okay? So we have four push buttons, and we have, uh, let me make it, okay. So we have four 
this one and this one. I'm gonna explain how can you program them uh, and you, how can you, actually when you program, I need to know if the switch is connected or not because if the switch is connected, it means something. I have to do something if this, the switch is connected. If the switch is disconnected, I have to do something else. So I, I need to check, okay? So I'm gonna give you details now. Uh, so this is input, input port, input, input uh, port. Uh, and these are connected to which, to which port guys, to port H. So let me, uh, what, what we explained so far, explain port B. This is the LEDs are connected to port B. Same thing also the, uh, when I come to the seven segment, they also connected to port B, but I didn't explain them yet. I also explained port J, you remember? I used it as enable for the LEDs, one bit. Also PP, PB0 to PB4, uh, three. They used enable or disable for the four seven segment we have here. Okay, what uh, have you, oh yeah, I also explained BT5. BT5, this one is connected here in the buzzer. Okay, so I, I, as I explain every device, when I come to the seven segment, uh, sorry, when I come to the, uh, the LCD, I'm gonna tell you where it is connected exactly. Same thing when I come to the keypad, I'm gonna tell you where, where it is connected and so on, okay? So now let's, let's focus now on the switches here. What is, what is the, uh, what, what we are gonna do now? I'm gonna tell you what we are gonna do, okay? Look here, guys. This is a microcontroller, okay? I told you we have port H. So we have P, P, H, zero. We have P, H, one, all the way until P, H, uh, seven. So this is port H, is that okay? There should be switch here. This is switch should put zero or one, uh, five volt, sorry, zero volt or five volt here. Yes, okay? So at the end, whatever, so here there should be a switch, okay? This is switch has to write here, or has to put here zero volt or five volts, that's, that's okay. And then when you read, when you, when you, when you read, when you read port H, BTH, when you read port H, you are gonna get a byte, you are gonna get a byte. This byte has a bunch of ones and zeros. Is that okay, guys? So that's exactly what we are gonna do. All what you, all what you need to, you need to do is, after you read this byte, you need to check. I need to check. I need to see if this bit is one or zero. That's it. If it is one or zero, you can know if it's connected or not. Is that okay? Uh, that's how it works. So there should be some circuit here. I'm gonna explain it now, right now. Okay, this circuit has to put zero when the switch is, is connected or the, or the other way. In one position, it should put zero. In the, the, the switch in the other position, it has to put five volt. I'm gonna explain how, how it, it is made this way. And then automatically, when this, if this one is zero volt, this, this bit is gonna be logic zero, okay? If this one, if this pin is five volt, this pin, this bit is gonna be logic one. And all what you have to do in, in the programming or in the program, you have to read a byte, which is BTH. And then after you read a byte, you need to check. For example, I need, I need to know if this is switch, this switch is connected or not. So it's at the end, or, or how can we handle it in programming? Programming wise, you have a byte, just to check this bit, if this bit is one or zero. And I already explained many times, how can you check some bits? Is, is, that, is that okay, guys? So the way, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna repeat it very quickly, okay? So to check, for example, if I need to know this, this bit is one or zero. For sure, for assembly, we have branch if clear. We have branch if set. You can use, what, so this one is gonna branch if bit is clear, or this one is gonna branch if bit is set. That's what I explained to before. But you have to be careful here. You have to be careful here because this instruction, as I said before, they are short, okay? They are not long, okay? There is another way, another way uh, which using end. Using end. How can you use end? This is the main idea here, guys. I wanna check this bit, okay? So I'm gonna do end operation. With what? With one and then zero, 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 zero. Why? Why you meet this way? I'm gonna tell you why. Because, zero and anything should be zero. So I, it's like I clear. Yes, that's exactly what I did. I mask or I clear the spits, okay? And when, when, and, and whatever there, P0, I'm gonna get P0. Is that okay, guys? So, so I'm gonna do, this is for sure, this is PTH, guys, okay? Portage. And then I'm gonna do end. 
with uh, this one should be in the location of the bit you want to check if it's connected or not. And then I'm going to check this byte. This byte should have one of two values. This byte should, should equal value zero or value one. Is that okay? If it is zero, that means B0 equal to zero. If it is one, means B, B0 equal to one. Any question, guys? I, I think I explained this multiple times. Any question? About, that's what we're going to do right now. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm gonna explain how the switch, uh, how the switch is connected. Okay, and uh, and also uh, what is the difference between a switch and push button. Listen to me, okay? Remember I told you, this is a switch and this is push, push button. Push button, big difference between a switch and push button. I'm gonna tell you how it is connected, okay? It's connected this way. Look here, guys. So we have here VCC, which five volt. We have resistance here, and then another resistance here, and this is a switch. Forget this part for now. Forget this part for now. This is a switch. And this is what we are gonna go to the pin. This is the bin is gonna be here, okay? Okay, so now, this is how external circuit looks like because I made it clear, I told you, what should happen is that when the switch in a certain position, there should be a zero volt here. If the switch in another position, it should be five volt here, right? So that's exactly what happened here. Look guys, look guys here. If the switch is open, okay, there is no current here. No, no electrical current. That means, and the, the voltage here is gonna be very close to five volts. So it's gonna be almost five volts, okay? Anyway, for, forget the electronic, uh, I'm gonna explain it why again, but yeah, if you don't understand the electronics, that's okay. So this one, it's, it looks like something like that. This is BT, BT, BT0 or BT1. Every BT has something like that and the switch like this. If the switch is open and this is five volt, almost there is no current here, okay? Uh, and then, the voltage here is gonna be like five volt, very close, or 4.8, something like that, very close to five, which is gonna be high, okay? That means, based on the circuit here, the way I meet this circuit is, this is the way I meet this circuit. If the switch is open, there should be five volt. Okay, okay, guys, this is how I meet the circuit. I can make the circuit the other way, but I'm explaining this is how I meet the circuit, okay? Now, if the switch is connected, there should be a current this way, and this is a very small resistance, so there is a very small drop drop here, a uh, voltage drop here. That uh, that means this voltage here, this voltage here is gonna be very close to zero volt if the switch is connected, okay? So the conclusion is that, this is a conclusion. The way I made the external circuit here is, if this, if this is, for example, PH0, okay? If the switch is open, if the switch is open, you should find five volt. In other words, if you check the bit, the corresponding bit, and you find one, that means the switch is open. If you find zero, that means the switch is closed. Is that okay? This is how I made the external circuit. Okay. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not gonna talk now about the push button. But let me let me show you first the program. How can how can you do it? Okay, guys. So uh, again. The, the way I made the external circuit, the external circuit, if the switch is open, it's gonna put five volt, switch is connected, it's gonna make, it's gonna put five volt, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, open five, closed, zero volt, okay? Um, and how many switch we have, as you see here, guys, how many switches? We have eight switches. Every switch is connected to one pH. So we have pH is zero until pH, pH seven. So we have eight switches, okay? So let, let me tell you uh, here, I wanna, make, I wanna make this program, okay? What I wanna make here is guys in this program is, write a program which continuously monitors the deep switch switches on the dragon board and echo the switches on the LEDs. What you mean by echo on the LEDs? I mean, every switch, this is a switch, 
is associated with one LED. Okay, if the switch is connected, LED on. If the switch is disconnected, LED is off. So, okay, so you, I wanna reflect the status of the switches on the LEDs. Okay, so at any time, at any time I connect a switch, LED is on. At any time I disconnect a switch, the LED is off. Okay, that's what I wanna do. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. Uh, I'm gonna show the how how this program is done here. Um, number one, guys. Uh, because I'm gonna use port H, you have to configure port H as input. Maybe this is the first time we configure it as input. Yeah, this is one. Okay. This part here is not new. That's exact because I'm gonna use the LEDs. So this part here is to configure LEDs. I already, I, we did it before. We already explained how can you configure LEDs. This one, only this instruction for port H. So I'm gonna put zero. I'm gonna put zero in DTR. H to configure it this way. Okay, any question? So this is just a configuration one time. Okay, and then this is here uh, forever. Uh, so here branch. For, so I'm gonna make infinite loop here, infinite loop. Okay, and then see, see what I did here, guys. Load a B T H. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read B T port H. Okay, guys, look what I'm what I did here. I need, I need someone to tell me. Why, why I did this way. So I'm gonna read the switches, and then I'm gonna complement the switches. That's what I'm gonna ask why I complement. After I complement, I'm gonna store E in port B. Very interesting. So I'm gonna read port H, okay? So if port H, for example, has one, zero, one, zero, one, one, whatever, I'm gonna complement this value, and then I'm gonna send it to port B, to the LEDs. Okay, guys? So I'm gonna read port H, which is the switches, and then I'm gonna complement it and store it back to port B. Can anyone tell me why why I have to use this complement? To turn on the LED. Sorry? In order to turn on the LED. No, this one is gonna turn on the LED, on or off. You got what I'm saying? Because the LEDs are connected to port B. This one has nothing to do with port B. What do you mean by turn on LEDs? Like inverting them, like the LEDs would Oh, never mind. No, no, you are right. What, what you are seeing is right. You are too close. No. If they were zero, the LEDs would be on. Yes, yes, that's true. Because if the switch is connected, if a switch is connected, so I'm going to, as I told you, I have just told you right now, if the switch is connected, I'm going to get zero, right? So without complement, so the LED is going to be off. If the switch is connected, yeah, I want to I wanna change the logic. So the, without complement, if the switch is connected, it's gonna become zero. I'm gonna mm -hmm. send I'm gonna send the zero to port B. So that means I'm gonna turn off the LEDs. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm gonna complement. So so that if the switch is connected, the bit is one, LED is on. Change the logic. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Any question here, guys? Look at this program. It's very trivial, very easy. Nothing is new. So let me summarize. We are gonna have more 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 programs, but uh, what I did here, guys, in this program, number one, or what is new here? What is new? Number one, you need to configure port H for input. You should not use any port before you configure it. One time is okay. Number two, I read. Uh, when you read a port or you, you write a port, again, any instruction we used to before for memory location, you can use it. So here I'm going to, uh, here uh, I'm going to read, uh, oops. here, here I'm going to, I'm going to read, uh, I'm gonna read port H, complement it, and then I'm gonna send to port P, okay? Any questions? Okay, now, um, now I'm gonna explain, okay, it's the same program. How can we do the same program uh, using C language? C language, okay. Number one, guys, uh, for sure, always, oops, I'm not sure why it's not there. Just give me a second, the switch, uh, the, the pin is not working. Just give me one second, okay. Okay. Okay, in C language, guys, so here, I wanna repeat just the same program in C language, okay? Uh, so number one, because I'm gonna use the LED, uh, I'm gonna use the LEDs, oops, um, oh yeah, let me try, I'm not sure it's one, not why, I'm gonna use pin. I'm gonna use. 
me see if I can, uh, I think I can use the mouse, okay. For some reason, maybe the pin, I need to charge the pin. Okay, the pin is not working for some reason. So I'm gonna try to use the mouse. Okay, so let me change the color here. Okay, so here, this is the initialization we, we are always doing. Also here, uh, this part is not new because I'm gonna use the LEDs. I have to enable LEDs, I have to disable seven segment. This is the part that is new, okay guys? This part is new. How can you, uh, this part is new. This is uh, how can you configure port H as input, right? So one time should be enough. And this is in while loop. This is while loop. Look, look how, how I meet it, guys. If this is too complicated to understand, I think this format is easier. Look at this format here. Maybe this is just easier. Look here, guys. I'm gonna say port B equal the complement value of port H. You can see how it is. This is very easy way to do it, port B port B equal complement of PTH. So you can use this format. This is exactly the same thing because I told you th what this function is doing, this function is gonna take whatever you send here as an argument here and put it to port P. So if you like this function, I'm okay. If you like this one also, I'm okay. okay. Yeah, I think the switch is uh, a pin now. I think it's me to charge the Okay, hey guys. So uh, you know this is you know this this operator here, this operator here, this operator. This is for complement. Okay. So uh, here I calculate the complement of voltage. This is a program, just very easy program. Now, now uh, before before I play before I choose a video, I have another I have another program here. Okay. I want I want to show this program here, guys. In this program, I want to you, you know I want to make the alarm, the police siren. Uh, 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 uh. I want to make the alarm, but I want to use a switch to turn the alarm on or off. So now, what what I'm teaching here, if you have a system, for example, very simple system, how can you use one switch to turn the system on or off? What I mean by the system here is the sound. So here, what I'm what I want to do here, guys, is that. I'm gonna use one switch. If the switch is connected, you will hear alarm, uh, 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 and so on. If the switch is to disconnected, you are not gonna hear anything. So it's like on and off for the alarm, okay? Any question? Okay, how can we do it? How can we do it? Look here, very simple. It is exactly the same program I took before. The only difference, I just added two instructions. It's the same program I took before for, for the, yeah. So it's, it's exactly like this, this, this one here, okay? So what I did, I, did, I just added two instructions. I added one instruction here for sure to program BTH, to configure BTH. So I have to do that, right? This is one thing. Another thing, what I did here, I write here an instruction here, here in the very beginning, this is an instruction, if the system is off, I'm gonna loop here, I'm gonna wait, I'm, I'm not gonna come this way. So, so let, me, let me explain before I show you how I made it, okay? So, so what I did here, guys, I wrote, I wrote here one instruction, okay? This instruction, if the switch is off, I'm gonna loop to here. The switch is off. I'm gonna loop here, and then I'm gonna keep checking. Okay, so, so here you have to check switch. And if the switch is, is, is connected, is on, if the switch is on, I'm gonna run, and then I'm gonna come back to check again. You got it? So let me show you, that's exactly what I did. Very simple, okay? So what I did here, guys, I wanna use one switch, I wanna modify the program I did before, for the police alarm, so that I want to add the one switch. This switch is going to turn on and off. The way I did it, number one, in configuration, you have to do this one. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, number two, here, you remember what we did? This is four, this is four for half a second, another four for half a second, and then I have to come back again to here. Okay, the way I did it, as you see here, guys, branch if clear. So I'm going to check this, I'm going to check this switch. If the switch is clear, if this switch is clear, that means the switch is connected uh, or uh, here I'm gonna consider, I have two position. One position connected, one position is disconnected. I'm gonna consider 
I'm going to consider uh, connected means it is off. There's, uh, no alarm, or there should be no, uh, don't run alarm, okay? So here, branch if clear. So if this bit is clear, so I'm going to branch to forever. So I'm going to come back here and check again. So I'm going to keep checking. I'm going to, I'm going to wait here. I'm not going to come here to, to run, 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 run uh, the video. Uh, sorry, the, uh, to run uh, the, the sound. Okay, so here I'm gonna check this bit as you see here, guys. If this bit is zero, I'm gonna come to here, check again. I'm gonna keep checking. Okay, so this is one way. If the switch is disconnected, I'm gonna come here, run it for, for one second, and then I'm gonna come to check back. You understand the logic, guys? Okay, so uh, very simple. I just add one instruction here. When you run, when I run, when I run the feed you, you will notice. There is some delay when I see, when I, listen to me, this is very important. You need to think about it, okay? Number one, if the system, if the system is off and when I want to turn it on, there is no delay. It's going to turn on right away. But if the buzzer is working, if there is alarm, and then I turn the alarm off, okay, there is a little delay. Just very little delay. You will notice it. It's it's not absolute. You will notice it. Can anyone justify why? You understand my question first? Okay. Let's see it in the video. Or let's let's do it first before you see it in the video. Okay. Yeah. So so the reason is that if the system is off and I want to turn it on, what's gonna happen when you check here, when you check here, you will find the, this branch is not gonna be taken and then I'm gonna come here to run to, to run the alarm right away. Is that okay? However, because I check every one second, this is the way I made this program. I made it this way. For sure, this programming, it may not be a big, it's, I'm, not see, I'm not saying this is a weakness. This is the way I programmed it, okay? So you can, uh, you can program in different ways, okay? Anyway, so what's gonna happen, here I have to check every one second, right? So here, I have to come here for one second and then I'm gonna check. Then I'm gonna, one second, check. So this is a main idea, the main idea, let me write it, let me kill this one first. So the way this program is made, guys, is here I check if the switch is connected or not. After one second, I'm gonna check again. So this is one second. And then I'm gonna check again every one second, okay? So, and that's what you will notice in the video. So if I change, if I turn the alarm off here, the alarm is gonna continue until you check. Is that, you understand what I'm saying? So the alarm is gonna continue working for some time until you notice. You notice when I change the switch, there is a small delay, okay? Anyway, so I'm, now I'm gonna run, let me run these two programs, these two programs, okay? Uh, no, so. This is the first program, guys. When I uh, this is uh, when uh, when I turn the switch on, okay. Uh, uh, the LED has to turn on. If I switch, turn the switch off, the LED has to turn off, okay. So if we look here, this program. When I now turn the switches off, off. That's why all the lights are off. I turn one, one, one couple more. Look what happened to the associated lid. It's on now. Let me try to do all of them. All the lids are on. And so on. So if you, any switch off, the corresponding lid is going to be off. And you, you see there is no delay once, once I turn it off, then it is off. Okay, so again, you have these programs. I'm sure they are working. You can try them, okay? Now I'm gonna make the alarm, okay? The alarm that has a switch. I don't know which one here. Um, yeah, alarm on off, okay? So let's run. So here I'm going to use the switch, guys, to turn the alarm on or turn the alarm off. 
you should notice, as I said, when I turn the alarm off, there is some little delay, okay? Because I check every one second, okay? You will see, you will, hopefully you will notice it now, okay? So. Now it's off. So here I'm gonna use the first button as on off button, look. Look, sometimes there is very little delay because we check the status of the switch every one second. Look. Sometimes if I turn it on off quickly, you can see some delay. Okay. okay, guys, any questions? So let me go come here. Now, uh, now I wanna I wanna explain the same two program uh, the same program this program I wanna repeat this program but using C using C language okay so the way I'm gonna make it is um, so I'm gonna explain the same program guys but just using uh, C language okay the alarm program. Okay, so here what I'm telling you here, guys, if you want to check if the switch is connected or not, this is the way you have to do it. Okay, so let me let me make it uh, red, the pin red. Okay, so this is the way you have to do it. Look, guys, what I did here. Here, this is PTH and number one. Okay, so here, this is number one, zero, zero, zero. Because why number one? Because I want to check this fit. Okay, what if you want to check any other bit? So you have to put this bit in different location. For example, if I want to check this bit, so it has to be 1000, which is number 80. It's not always number one, guys. Here I put number one because I want to check here this bit. If I want to check another bit, someone here, so the one has to be here. Everything is going to be zero. Okay, so, so here I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what I did here. Uh, if, if BTH, BTH, and number one one zero 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 if this if this is equal zero what it means it means this bit was zero very easy as you see here guys okay so we're gonna execute the body we're gonna execute the body if 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 uh, switch zero is 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 zero uh, or pth okay sorry if pth equals zero which which means the switch h zero is connected okay uh, this is the way you have to do it okay um, there is another way again i explain different ways whatever you like i will be happy it's okay okay there is another way what is the other way there is a function this function here is called the switch whatever name of the switch underscore down Okay, this function is gonna return, so we have a number of function guys, this function should return true or false. Okay, so if the switch is down, so it's gonna return true. If the switch is up, it's gonna return false. So which is switch? I'm gonna tell you which one. If you look, this, this PTH here, okay? Okay, sorry, okay, sorry, this is a switch, this is for the push button. Okay, I'm gonna explain the push button later. So forget the push button now, okay? So we have here, this is pH zero, pH one. We have a number, look here. So we have a number of switches here, okay? Connected, let me focus on the switch, it's not the push button. So this one, I'm gonna come to this one later because this is for the push button, okay? So forget this one now, okay? You, this is for push button, you can, for the switch, you can use this one, that's okay. Okay, now, uh, same thing here. Uh, here, guys. Here, I want to check. I want to check the last bit. I want to check this uh, last switch. So here, that's why I'm using. Uh, no, no, sorry. I want to switch uh, switch number two. That's why I'm using number eight. So it means zero, zero, one, right? One, two, no, it's one, zero, one. 
okay? Because it's one, two, four, eight, that's correct. And then zero, zero, zero. So now I wanna check this bit. I wanna, I wanna check this switch. So I'm gonna put one here, is that okay? So that's why, that's why, so, uh, that's why I'm doing it this way, okay? Uh, same thing for any, any switch you wanna check, okay? Um, I'm gonna come to the push buttons later, okay? So now, let's see, let's see how can I do the same program I have, to, I just explained right now, but in, in C language, okay? So the way I have to do it, guys, is you can, forget this one now, okay? So you can say BTH, this is, you remember, this is one four, okay, to generate one frequency. We have another four here to generate another frequency. Is that okay? So from here, from here to here is gonna be one second. Okay, when I come back, I need to check. So here what's gonna happen, if the switch, if the, if the system should be on, if the switch is connected and the system should be on, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna come here. If not, so, so the, the body if, if is not gonna be executed. Is that okay? So here, this is guys, this is the same program I took before. The only difference is I just added this if. So I'm gonna execute, I'm gonna run the alarm just if the switch is connected, is that, is that okay? So tell me, t t first of all, okay, this one, what this one is, what this function is that, okay. This function is gonna return BTH. So you can just use BTH in my opinion and that's it, okay? So this function is gonna return 8-bit uh, here. So this function is gonna, we call it switch one, okay? Switch one is gonna return, so it's like exactly like BTH. Okay, so if you wanna like use this function, it's okay. If you wanna use PTH, it's okay. So what I'm doing here, guys, is that this is PTH. And this is number one. Number one means one, zero, 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 zero. Is that okay, guys? So now that means I wanna check this. I wanna uh, check the first switch. Is that okay? If the result is one, if the result is one, what it means? It means, it means, it means this pit was one, right? It means this pit was one, okay? If the result is zero, here I'm check with, with one, okay? If the result is zero, that means this pit is zero. Is that okay? So anyway, I want it, it's up to you. It's two positions. So this pit, every, every switch has a bit here, guys. It's two positions. Zero, one position is gonna become zero, one position is gonna become one. It's up to you. So you can consider when it is one, I wanna turn, I'm gonna consider this one on or I can consider this one off for the system, right? So you can consider one position for on, one position for off, okay? Uh, so it's just two positions, okay? So what I'm doing here, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run the alarm if, if this pit is one. So if this pit is one, which, it, which means if the switch is open, open, okay, I'm gonna run, I'm, and I'm, in open, I'm gonna consider this, the system is on, I'm gonna run this one. If I make this one zero, if I make this one zero, that means I'm gonna run this one when the switch is, this, I don't want to confuse you guys, it's very simple. The switch has two position, right? One position is gonna give you zero, the other position is gonna become one. And it's up to you, if you wanna consider the position zero, on or off, it's up to you, okay? Anyway, any questions so far, guys? What's the time? Okay, we still have some time. Okay, uh, let me... Now I'm gonna come to the uh, so so let me let me tell you what I did the conclusion the conclusion guys is very easy okay before I before I move forward let me tell you the conclusion which is very easy okay uh, what I did so far guys or the last part is we have eighty switches right we have eighty switches okay. And these switches are connected to port H, PTH. Is that okay? And, and all what you have to do, you guys, uh, you need to, all what, you need to know if the switch. You need to know if the switch is which position, okay? Open or closed, okay? And so, so that's all. All what you need to know. You need to know if the switch is open or closed. It's just the two position. Position is in case of, I told I told you in case of open. So you are gonna read bit one. If it is closed, you are gonna read zero, okay? And then. I'm gonna do something here or I'm gonna do something here, okay? So what we did, you can consider if, if it is open, okay, that means I'm gonna run the alarm. 
If it is closed, so means alarm is off. Okay, guys. So all what you have to do is you have one byte, PTH, and then you have to check. And that's what I have explained. You just you need to check. I need to check to know if this bit, and I already explained, starting from in chapter two, even I explained, how can you do that? So you have to do end operation. You need to check if this bit is one or zero. That's it, to know if the switch is open or closed, okay? So that's what I explained uh, so far, okay? Now, what I'm gonna explain now, guys, the push buttons, push buttons. Okay, so let me, let me show you here. The board, our board has four push buttons. It switches and it has four push buttons, okay? I'm gonna tell you how they are connected and how can we use them, okay? So let me open this one. Okay, guys, so these are the, these are the switches. That's what I explain right now. We have eight switches, okay? Also, we have four push buttons. That's what I'm explaining now. How can we program the push button? How they are connected? Is that okay? How can you use them? That's what I'm gonna explain now, the push button, okay? First of all, how the push button are connected? That's what I'm gonna tell you now. And then how can you program it? How, uh, and also, um, let me tell you now, how it is different from switches. I'm gonna tell you how it is different from switches. So, but let me, let me come here. Okay, number one, how they are connected? I'm gonna tell you how it is connected. Look here, guys, at this figure. Okay, they are connected this way. This is the switch. And this is the push button here. Ah, so we have four push buttons, okay? These four push buttons are connected to PH0 until PH3. Okay, guys? So PH0 to PH3. That means PH0 to PH3, every pin of them has a switch and also has push button, that's true. So everyone has both a switch and push button. And usually, listen to me, this is a very important thing. Usually you are gonna use one of them, okay? Someone can ask me, why, is he, why we make this this way? Again, when you, when you design your microcontroller, you don't, need, you don't need to put a switch and push button on the same pin. You don't need to do that. So they did it again because the, we are using this board for educational, for educational purpose. Is that okay? So they just put too many things, okay, on this board. But uh, when you do it, you can just, uh, when you design your own microcontroller, the way you have to do it is very simple. You can just, okay, let me clear all. You can just make one switch, so you can just delete this part this way, and you can connect if you, you make your own board, okay? You can just connect this one to the pin, that's it. So only push button to, a, to one pin, and you, lose, and you use another pin for, uh, for, for switches, okay? Anyway, so, so the, okay, so what I wanna say, guys, is the following, okay? Let me say it again. Number one, I'm talking about port H, this number one. Every pin in port H is connected to one switch. Okay, number two. The first four pins in port H, which is PH0 until PH3, are in addition to the switch, they are also connected to push button, this way, as you see here in this figure. Look at this figure here. Is that okay? So, so how, that means, okay, so someone can ask me, so uh, can I use both of them? The, no, you shouldn't use both of them at the same time. You got what I'm saying? That means if you decide, for, for example, for BH0, if you, if you d decide to use the switch, you should not use the push button. If you use the push button, you should not use the switch, okay? So this is something 
you should consider, okay, you, we, you cannot use both of them at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna tell you how it works, the way it works, okay? So this is push button, as you see here, guys. If it is connected, okay, so the current, current has to go this way, so I'm gonna get a zero volt here, okay? So if you read, if you read B, BTH and you find zero, that means the, switch, the push button is connected, okay? If the push, push button is open, If it is open, okay, that means that means there is no current. There is no current here. That means this voltage is gonna become five volt. Okay. So the conclusion is if you if you want to use the push button, okay, and if this bit is zero, that means you press the push button, you press it. Okay. If it is one, because once you press, you actually connect it to zero. So the voltage is gonna become zero volt. If you release, it's gonna, it's gonna, one means you release it, okay? Uh, you, uh, okay, so before I elaborate, I just wanna make sure maybe you don't know what is the difference between a switch and what is the difference between push button, okay? So I'm gonna explain it very quickly here. switch a switch guys it has two positions is that okay two positions so you can connect you can connect this way or that way it has two position okay and then if you connect here a switch okay guys so this is how it looks like if the switch if the switch if if the switch is connected sorry switch is disconnected so you are gonna get five volt that means the switch is off Okay, and can it can stay off for a long time. Once you decide, well, here you change, here you change the position of the switch. When you change the position of the switch, okay, if it is off, so you are, now you are gonna connect it. When I connect, I'm gonna get zero volt. Is that okay? So this is how the switch is. The switch, it has two position. If you put it in one switch, in, in one position, it's gonna continue this way until you change it, until you bring it to the other position. A uh, push button is completely different. You know what is push button, guys? This is like a ring, like a ring button, okay? It has a spring. So inside here, it has like a spring here, okay? Inside it has a spring. So when you press, when you press, you actually connect. This is when you press. Once you release, it's gonna be open. So you should understand what is the difference between a switch. Okay, so how this is gonna make the signal here different? Okay. Is so it's gonna be the signal here. If you connect a, if you connect here a push button, the signal is gonna become different. You know how? It's as follow. Now the push button you didn't press. Once you press, it's gonna come down. So here you press. Here you hold. Once you release, it's gonna come up here. Release. So, so, the push button, always one, normally it is one, normal. So here, so normally you are gonna receive a logic one, okay? Once you press, you are gonna bring it, bring it to zero, hold, once you release, it's gonna up to one again, okay? This is how the switch, uh, sorry, the push button works. A switch is different, a switch, Okay, there is no normal. Okay, you put it in one position, it's gonna become one all the time, and the other position is gonna continue zero until you change the position. Is that okay? Any question here? You understand uh, the difference between uh, or how the signal will look like in case of? Uh... Um, yeah, sure. So the button does is it so in its natural state without pressing it? Is it is the uh, value one? Yes. It's gonna be Okay. Because the way, the way, okay. So, this so is Port the, H would have a one in that position on the yes. first. Why? Because this is the way I did the circuit. Look, this is how the circuit is. Here, five volt. Okay. And here, this is, for example, BH0. Okay. So, normally, this uh, one is open. Normally, it's open. There is no current. So, this one is five volt. Is that okay? Yeah. When you press, when you press, it's going to become something like that. Here, you press. Okay. Zero volt. 
that's okay okay so let me All tell right. you okay let me tell you the conclusion here quickly okay conclusion if you have a switch what's important to me how the signal is going to look different okay and if you have push button in case of a switch guys the signal if you look at the pin here to the signal the signal is going to high okay until you change until you change it so here here you change you change the position here you change the position is that okay but if you if you look at the push button it's going to become something like that all the time it's high when you press you are going to make it low for some time and then it's going to come high again when you press it's going to be it's going to be pulses like this one every time you press and release you are going to make a pulse like this one is that okay so it's how somehow different between switches okay? both of them are connected to port h port h okay so let me tell you here We still have nine minutes. Okay, so let me. Okay. I think I have, I just want to delete these ones. Okay. Uh, okay. So look here, guys. So, for port H, we have eight switches. Is that okay, guys? But for the first, for the first four, for the first four pins, okay, every pin there is a switch and push button connected to it. This is the switch here, and this is a push button here. Is that okay? And I made it clear. If you want to use, usually we are not going to use both of them at the same time. Okay. So you need to decide. For example. I'm gonna use here for BH, BH0, I'm gonna use a push button. That means you should not use the switch. If you use a switch, you should not use the push button, okay? So, and, and again, they don't have enable or disable like LEDs. They don't have this one, okay? Look, look at this trick, very important trick, okay? Common mistake, so you have to be careful about it. Listen to me, very common mistake. Look here, guys. If I wanna use the push button, this is a push button, I wanna use the push button you have to make sure that this switch is open if you want to use the push button you have to make sure the switch is open is that okay so that you by this way you can generate a signal like this one every time i press you are going to make a pulse like this one this way is that okay so okay. you can't have oh, sorry. the switch sorry. on and so, sorry. the button down with him. Just give me one second. I wanna, I'm going to complete it, and then I'm going to listen to your question, okay? So you have to make sure the switch is open. Someone can ask me, now, what if the switch What if the switch is connected? If you forget and the switch is connected. The, if the switch is connected, that means the, the circuit. I'm talking about circuit. I'm talking about hardware. That means the current is going to go this way, and it's going to be zero all the time. So if I press the button or I don't press the time, it's going to be zero all the time. Because the zero is not, come, it's not coming from the push button. The zero is coming from the switch because you connected the switch. So if you look, if you look here at BH0, you will see zero volt all the time. You press, you don't, if you don't press or you don't press, it's zero all the time. Because this zero is coming from here. You got what I'm saying? So what I'm saying before, before I take questions, what I'm saying, if I want to use the push button, you have to make sure this is open. By this way, by this way, pH0, for example, if you use pH0, it's going to have a signal like this one. Every time you press, you can make a pulse like this one. Okay? So now you can ask me, what's your question? Any, any question? The, the girl who interrupted me now, so you still have a question? <laughs> no, you answered it. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, you, 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 got, you got the point. Again, I'm explaining this is the way, the way they made the board. They made the board this way. But when you make your own microcontroller design, you, you don't need to make it this way. Okay, anyway. Okay, so now, uh, so now, how can, I'm, now I'm going to look at the programming. 
in my program, all what I need to know, I need to know if you press or you don't press, if, uh, if, if you press the button or not, okay? The way you are gonna do it, if you press the button, so that means it is zero. So if it is zero, that means you press the button, right? If it is one, that means you didn't press the button, okay? So how can you do that? Just, just similar to what I have just explained, you need to you need to check if this bit is one or zero. Okay, if if the, if this bit is one, that means you 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 don't press. Okay, if it is zero, that means you are pressing the button. Okay, uh, this is the way you are gonna do it. Okay, um, let me see here. Okay, that's I think that's what I'm explaining here, and I'm gonna ha have some programs. Okay, let me. Yeah, that's, oops. Okay. Okay, so what I'm saying guys now is uh, if, how can how can you know if the switch if you press or not? Very easy. So this is similar similar to what we did here. Okay. So for example, if you wanna look here, if you wanna test, if you wanna check if you press the push button or not. Okay. If you press the push button or not. Okay. All push button number five because if you look here the numbers here this one I'm gonna call it. This is the way you, they call it in the board. Switch number five. Switch number two, three, four, and this number five. So switch number five is connected to pH zero. Okay. So if I want to know if you press or not, all what I have to do, I have to check this bit. If this bit is one, that means you are not pressing. Okay. If this bit is zero, that means you press. You press the button. Okay. So uh, that's what I'm showing you now. How can we do it? Okay. So the way the way I'm doing it here, guys, as I explained, you are gonna look. Uh, you, you, I'm gonna look at this bit. So I'm gonna put one zero 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 as you see here. If the result is zero, that means you press. That means this bit is zero. That means you you press the button. Okay. There is one way to do it. We have another way. We have another way. What what's this other way? We have a function. We have a function. This function is called a switch five down. Okay. This function is gonna return true or false. This function is gonna return true if a switch five is down, if you press, okay? This one is gonna turn false if the switch five is, is you don't press. So, so what I'm saying here, guys, for the four push buttons we have, okay? To check if you press or not, you have two options. You can use this way. This is the same way we used with, with the switches, okay? You can use the same way. Or we have functions. We have a switch whatever I, so we have four, five switches here. Switch, for example, we have two, three, four, five. This is the way you name it, okay? So we have a switch, for example, five underscore down. We have another one, a switch five underscore up. Okay? So this one is gonna return true if, if you press, if it is down, if, this, if you press. This one is gonna turn false this way. So, so what I'm saying here, guys, uh, you can uh, you can use this one or that one, whatever you like. So you can use this one to know if you press the button or not. You can use this one to know if you press the button or not, okay? Same thing for a switch two. For a switch two here, I'm gonna use here the word, where is the switch two? Yeah, this one, we call it switch two, okay? So you can use this one or you can use this one, okay? Because you, now I'm, I have to check P, pH is three. If you go, come here, Switch two is connected to pH three, so I have to, I have to check pH three. Okay, so here I'm gonna use number eight, which is zero 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 one, number eight here. Okay, same thing here. So uh, you can you put not here, not. Okay, so not if this one is true, not is gonna make it false. If false, this one is gonna make it true. Anyway, so this is how you can know if you press the button or not. Okay, uh, I think that's enough. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, next time I'm gonna continue teaching this part. I'm gonna teach the switches, okay? So let's, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I think that's enough for the lecture. We're gonna meet six o'clock, okay?
I'm not sure. Okay, guys. So just take rest until six o'clock. I'm gonna email you. Let me. I'm sorry.